Now, whether you just had knee replacement two to three days ago, or maybe you have an upcoming surgery coming up, you're gonna wanna listen. In this video, I'm gonna teach you the best exercises no one is doing after knee replacement. Stay tuned. Now, when we talk about knee replacements, we like to educate our patients on three things after surgery. Number one, controlling the pain and the swelling. Number two, increasing your range of motion. Number three, building strength. So we're gonna break this up into three different stages. When we talk about number one, pain and swelling, hopefully when regards to pain, you're communicating with your doctor about getting on a regular pain medication regimen. If your pain intensity is just too high for exercises, it's important that you're communicating with your surgeon about that. Now, in regards to swelling, as physical therapists, we can educate you on ways to reduce the swelling. Number one way, elevate your legs. And I'm not talking sitting down, propping your leg up on a chair. I'm referring to you laying down and elevating your legs above your heart level. That is gonna significantly reduce your swelling so that you can participate in some of the exercises we're gonna get into. The other thing that we can do in regards to managing your swelling is we can teach you ankle pumps. And that is simply when you are just laying down on your back in bed and you're simply working on moving those ankles up and down, up and down. And you would simply do this for about a minute at a time. And usually we recommend this to do periodically throughout the entire day. Now, the second important factor that we're gonna talk about is range of motion. This is the most important thing that we wanna focus on after knee replacement. What we're looking for is, can I get my knee straight again at zero degrees knee extension? And can I flex my knee again past at least 90 to 100 degrees? Now, everybody's a little bit different, but those are the markers that we're shooting for at least two to three weeks after surgery. Now for range of motion, there's two things that we wanna focus on. We have extension of the knee where we're straightening and we have knee flexion, bending the knee, okay? So the first few exercises that I'm gonna teach you are gonna focus on our range of motion with bending and straightening. So we're gonna get into our first one uh, and that is simply called the heel slide. Now, when we're doing this, one thing we wanna keep in mind is that all of our range of motion activities actually want to be passive. A lot of people uh, want to actively move their leg or maybe they feel like they should be able to actively move their leg. It's very early in the stage. And so we're gonna use something like this, which is like a yoga strap or a belt. You can even use like an ACE bandage, which, which works really well. And you're gonna simply lay down on your back. Okay. Couple different ways you can do this. You can either wrap it around your foot, okay? Or you can even wrap it around your leg, okay? And so I'm gonna choose to wrap it around my leg. And the heel slide, the purpose of this exercise is to get you to bend your knee a little bit further. And so when we're doing this, you're using the strap to pull your knee up as high as you can go, just like that, and you're sliding it back down, okay? One thing I like to get patients to practice is once they reach that end point, is to pause for a few seconds there and see if they can use the belt to go up a little bit higher, okay? And when they're working on this exercise, they're typically doing this for about 10 repetitions, sliding their heel all the way up, pausing for a second and going a little bit further there to see if they can get a little bit more range of motion in the knee. Now, when we talk about bending our knee, I'm gonna be honest, the heel slide is not everybody's best exercise. And I understand that that can be very painful for you guys after surgery. So 
I wanted to provide a few alternatives to help you get that knee bending. One of the best ways that I like to teach my patients is sitting at the edge of the bed or sitting on a chair, preferably with your feet hanging off the edge like this. Now, let me tell you why. Sometimes on a brand new joint, distraction where our, our foot is hanging from the edge of the bed sometimes feels better for people. Other times it doesn't. So if this bothers you and gives you more pain, do not push past that. It's not gonna feel good. So, but if you can tolerate this and maybe you're not having a lot of success with the heel slide, this is a great way to also get knee flexion or bending back into your routine. And I like to call this a seative passive hang. And so you're sitting down, your surgery knee is hanging as far as you can get it. You're probably going to look more like this and you're going to slowly just try to relax that entire quadricep compartment because this is the area that's going to be very tight and you're going to probably feel some pulling on the incision there. Now, another thing you can also do is you can use that opposite leg to help pull that knee back further and further. So I'm using an overpressure method where I'm using the good leg to cross over the, the surgery leg to pull back as far as I can go. The other thing I'm focusing on is staying nice and tall through my hips. A lot of people, when they cheat, they'll start to rise that hip and they'll do this because they're compensating at their hip joint versus sitting up nice and tall and try to bend more at their knee joint. Okay, so it's important that when you do this, you sit up nice and tall. Another alternative that I like to give people for the seated passive knee hang, um, maybe they want another activity to help bend their knee again, and that's simply by scooting forward into a chair. One of my favorite ones as well. So if I take just this kitchen chair here, and I start by just sitting at the edge of the chair, I'm gonna focus on first pulling my surgery leg behind me to start the exercise. Now, the other thing that's gonna happen is my non-surgery leg is gonna go forward, and it's more helpful when you have a chair with some arm support so you can have something to hold on to. But given this chair doesn't have any arm support, I can go ahead and just grab onto the bottom or the top of the chair, and all I'm gonna do keeping my body upright is I'm gonna shift and scoot my butt forward into the chair. Notice what happened there is it required me to bend my knee a little bit further. I can hold that end range for a, a few seconds, maybe five seconds, and then I'm gonna pull all the way back. Once again, I'm gonna scoot forward, trying my best to keep my heel down on the ground, and you're gonna feel a lot of pulling on the anterior compartment of the knee. That is okay, your knee is safe. And you're gonna slide back just like that. One more time, scooting forward and scooting back, okay? So we worked on a few exercises to help bend your knee. Now we're gonna show you a few exercises to help straighten the knee. So the next exercise we're gonna work on is called a terminal knee extension. Now, typically after surgery, we see the pictures in our brochures and they have the patient simply laying down with their foot propped up on a towel and they're just hanging out here. And that's great because you're probably after surgery going to feel a lot of pull in the hamstring and the calf, which is located behind the knee. Now, if you really want to improve your ability to straighten your knee, one of the most best ways you can do that is by sitting up. And the reason for that is it actually changes the position of your pelvis and puts more of a stretch on the hamstring and the calf area. These are the muscles behind the knee that we're trying to work on when we're working on this terminal knee extension. So what I typically do for my patients is when they're doing this one, I have them sit up as tall as they can. And what they're gonna feel is a nice pull behind the hamstring and the calf area. And I guarantee you that this over time, the muscles in the back of the knee will start to relax and you'll have the ability to straighten the knee a lot easier, okay? 
Now we're gonna move into our last phase, which is the strength phase. And so what we're focusing on is trying to get a good contraction of the quadricep muscle. And that is important because when you stand and when you start walking, that muscle needs to be able to fire and turn on, especially when you start weight bearing on that side. So the quadricep exercise, or we also call it a quad set exercise, is one way that we can learn how to regain control in the quadricep muscle. So we're focusing on holding that muscle contraction, relaxing, holding. And when people are doing this, I also like them to sit up in this position primarily so that they can see the muscle contraction of their leg. Some people have difficulty. Well, I can't tell if I'm doing it correctly or, or how do I know if I'm doing it correctly? Well, take a look at your other leg that hasn't had surgery. Squeeze that quadricep muscle on your own and you should start to see the leg kind of contract and shake, right? And then you can go to the surgery leg and try again and work on that side and see what you get, okay? So the quad set is a great one. Now maybe I've had scenarios where the quad set exercise is just too easy for people. Uh, maybe they've been able to do three sets of 10 of about five second holds and it's just so easy that they're like, can you give me something else? Is there more that I can do? Well, yes, I can. We're gonna progress you along. If the quad set is too easy, we're gonna move you on to the short arc quad movement. And so we're still focusing on activating the quadricep muscle, but now we're just gonna put, uh, you can use a few towels. I like a half foam roll because it's nice and sturdy. You can't really cheat. And what you're gonna work on, keeping the back of the knee in contact with this foam roll here, you're gonna work on trying to lift the bottom of the heel up off the bed, okay? I don't want you trying to lift the entire leg. That's not what we're doing here. We're keeping the back in contact with the surface of the foam roll, but I'm focusing on really trying to feel that muscle contraction in the quadricep muscle and lifting that heel up. If I wanna make it a little bit more challenging, I can even hold at the very top for about three seconds and then slowly lowering. And so we're working on with this one, all of these we're working on for about 10 repetitions. The supine hip flexor stretch. Now, why is this important? Well, if we're not putting a lot of pressure through that leg, then we're also developing a lot of stiffness, but not only in the knee, but also in the hip, okay? So when I walk, I have to have the ability to take a step and extend my hip behind me. Okay, if I haven't been putting pressure on that knee, typically you're probably looking more like this. So that hip is actually more in a flex position. So how can we start to prepare you for walking? Well, we can start to provide you with some stretches for the hip so that you can start to extend that hip behind you. One of the best ways we can do that is by laying flat on our back. If my left knee is the surgery leg, you're simply gonna bring your right knee up towards your chest, trying to keep this leg down as much as possible, and also not allowing the leg to turn out or inward. We want it nice and straight. And what I should feel is a nice pull in the hip flexors, but also we have to remember that that quad muscle also goes from the kneecap all the way into the hip. So you're gonna feel good pull on the quadricep muscle as well. And I usually like to recommend two to three repetitions for 20 second or 30 second holds on this stretch. Okay, so that's gonna feel really good there. Okay. So there you guys have it. Some of my best exercises I like to provide to my patients after a knee replacement, especially four or five days out. Um, we are going to follow up with a few other series in the two to three week progression of what you guys should be working on at the two to three week mark. Uh, so stay tuned for my upcoming video coming up. Also, thank you for watching today. 
If you found value in this video or you feel like someone would benefit from this video, please share the video, please like it. Also subscribe. That's the best way that you can support my channel and to help me continue to put out content that people wanna know about. Dr. Mike is out, bye.